Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his field to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the paws that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough, have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you. And I have never disobeyed your commands. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, you have devoured, who have devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed me, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. you will have a hard time finding a recent movie about forgiveness. From some time on, brutal revenge became a popular theme of the entertainment industry. Not only movies, but also reality TV shows and other forms of entertainment commonly adopt retaliation and revenge. The movie series, The Avengers, expose their theme in their titles. The superheroes 
exist not for forgiveness, but the annihilation of bad guys. If that were the purpose of the superheroes, Jesus could not fit in the description of a superhero. In contrast, Jesus died for forgiveness. Why are we so excited about revenge? Is it because revenge satisfies our sense of justice? Does the elder son in the parable of the prodigal son become angry because their father betrays the sense of justice? Should we punish even those repenting and begging for forgiveness like the prodigal son? In our times, the belief that people do not change is widespread. Many people do not believe in repentance and conversion anymore. Thus, punishment and retaliation are only options. But when we want to go, but we want to go a little further and finish those hopeless people. We demand more than justice. We want to strike them severely enough so that they may never come back. A preemptive strike or preventative measure, you may call it. At the same time, we have resentment against granting forgiveness. People feel sad, angry, and bitter when evil people receive mercy and goodness. People feel as if their righteousness were depreciated. The prodigal son in the parable did not harm the elder son. The prodigal son squandered his inheritance only, not his brother's. But the elder son was angry with his father, who offered mercy to the prodigal son, who now begged for forgiveness. This reaction of the elder son is nothing but envy, spiritual sadness of others' good. Satan likes to distort. He twists our sense of justice with skepticism over conversion, and he suggests that mercy is weak and hopeless. Finally, Satan fills our hearts with envious bitterness. In this way, he leads into further destruction and eventual annihilation.